Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. We are doing a uh, beginner's guide now again on how not to suck in Royal Revolt 2 since there's been so many patches the game has evolved dramatically since we have uh, you know looked at it nine eight months ago. Now we are at a beginning free to play account and we're going to take a look at specifically spells and troop selection and upgrading. So if you want to see some uh, more raids and general tips check out part one of this series. I will link that down below, but here we go. We're looking at the spells here, so you can see we have our wizard tower at level 6. You, Your very first spell that you get, you want to upgrade as soon as possible. This is Hammer Strike. You're going to be using this for a very, very long time. You want to upgrade that, again, ASAP. It is also very, very cheap to upgrade. You can see we have it maxed out for our level. We need to upgrade our wizard tower before we can upgrade it again, so that is good. You always want to have it maxed out for your level. The next spell that you get is Toxic Cloud, and you don't really use that much, so you're not going to be upgrading that at all, uh, or very, very little. The third spell you get is decent. It's um, It can replace the Toxic Cloud when you have in the very beginning. Um, it is a stun spell, and it stuns all the enemies and the towers around you for, at this level, 5.5 seconds. It has a 20 second cooldown, so... As you level this up, it becomes more and more effective. But by the time you're able to level it up high enough to really kind of make a difference, uh, you'd rather kill things than just stun them. So then you end up getting Firestorm. And this is where you start getting your amazing offensive powers on your hero. Uh, Firestorm is probably the best spell in the game until you get to the end and you get uh, you know Sonic Blast and Bladestorm. Firestorm is... Fire based, which means it it does a tremendous amount of damage to arrow towers, to the blockade or the barricades, anything wooden, it will do a tremendous amount of damage, and it already has a high base damage as well. Uh, it takes 14 seconds to to cool down, so you can spam it fairly fast. After that, you're going to be leveling up. If you have three spell slots, you're going to be leveling up the sword rain and. Getting your third spell slot is the most important thing in the game. Save your gems up, get the third spell slot. That is the number one focus that you need to do. When you get a third spell slot, you can have a lot of different combinations, and you also have a lot more offensive power, which generates you a lot more gold, and also generates you a lot more metals, which will in turn generate you free gems. So 600 or 500 gems, I don't recall exactly what the price is, but you have to pay that much gems to get your third spell slot. The spell slot you can see over here, these are locked. These two things, you do not need a third troop. You need a third spell slot. This is the most important thing in the game. I cannot stress this enough. Get this ASAP. As soon as you can have the amount of gems, you want to get that as soon as possible. And once you unlock that, the next spell that you come across is the heal spell. And the heal spell doesn't have uh, much use early on. It's okay, but you're not going to be using it. It's better just to go and kill things, like I said with the stun spell. The heal spell becomes extremely powerful, probably around level 5 or 6. At that stage, it becomes really, really important to have that leveled up. So in the very, very beginning... Starting off, you can see we haven't really leveled up the heal spell too much. You want to make sure that you unlock and level the sword rain after you get your third spell slot. If you only have two spell slots, you're going to be using probably Hammer Strike and Firestorm for the majority part of the game. You can see everything is maxed out level there. And then once you max those guys out, you're going to need to actually upgrade your wizard tower. So we're going to go over and take a look at our wizard tower to see if we can upgrade that. We don't care about the toxic cloud. So we can't upgrade the wizard tower until we get the throne room upgrade. So now you're like, all right, we got to get the throne room upgraded. And you see over here, what does it take? And it takes 800,000 to upgrade the throne room. And then to do that, we need an upgraded treasure chamber. So we have to go and upgrade the treasure chamber so we can store 800,000. Click on that. There you go. So now we're going to be waiting for that to finish. The next important aspect is you're going to want to upgrade your Alliance Tower. It's very, very cheap. 
maybe get it to like level three or level four, and so you can donate a little bit more to your alliance and help them out. You want to make sure that you join an alliance because you get gold boost and you also get troop boost. So that is huge. So we are in a just a random alliance. This was an open free alliance, and we're going to get an 8% gold boost on every fight that we do just for joining up and, and you know hanging out with this guy in his alliance. So there's a couple other people. You can actually chat in here. This is the elite boost section, and you can see we actually have elite boosts in here, and you can upgrade them, give more duration to them, but it gives you a 31% increase on your knights and then a 24% increase on the uh, on the health of the knight. So it's a huge, huge increase on stats. And as you unlock your alliance and level it up higher, you get more of these elite boosts. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is the troops. Troop selection is vital. And you'll notice here that we have our knights, they are boosted up with the elite boost, so they're bright, shiny, purple, aura-ish. And it changes the effect. And it also has a timer over there. It is active for 1 hour and 15 minutes. When that timer is gone, it will revert back to this standard color here. And you can see all the stats are actually in green, which means they're getting a boosted effect. This stat right here is an attack value, and that is in damage per second. This is your HP stat over here. You'll notice that they are, you know, comparatively low to this over here, uh, but they also have a different attacking type. This is a normal type. This is a arrow. This is a piercing type. So there's weaknesses and strengths for each type. Most buildings and units are very resistant to piercing, and that's why the damage per second is so high on these guys, is because they try and compensate that that you know the weakness and resistance there's also the different aspect of right here there's a cost value it costs one little bubble to summon whereas an archer it costs two bubbles to summon so those are those things archers are a ranged unit as well which has that and they have a lower hp value but yeah so this dps is actually pretty good pretty pretty impressive and you want to make sure that you are upgrading your knights to max as soon as possible you want to upgrade those guys you can see we don't have enough gold yet. We need to go and get a hundred and something thousand more to upgrade those guys. You don't really want to upgrade your archers. You don't really need them um, early on in the game. They do get really powerful higher up. But for the beginning of the game, you don't need the archers too much. And then the third unit you get is the paladin over here. The Paladins have a, they're like the tank unit, they have tons and tons of HP, they do very little amount of damage. Those units are more for a defensive aspect of the game. Then there is an Ogre that you can unlock down in the dungeon, and you can see this account, we haven't even unlocked the monsters. But these guys are very, very expensive, and they're not going to see much gameplay down in the lower levels because they cost way too much energy to actually summon and bring out. The Froster... It actually is a decent unit. It slows down opponents on defense and also slows down opponents on attack. We're going to go ahead and upgrade that guy right there. It won't do much damage, but it has a great status effect. Then as you go a little bit further, you unlock the cannon. And the cannon is the biggest damage dealing unit in the game. Don't be fooled by the low modifier over here. Again, this is damage per second. So that what they don't tell you is that the cannon only fires like one shot every five or six seconds. And that one shot is, you know, a thousand damage points or 1200 damage points. It's a crazy amount of damage. And it is also this type, which is blunt damage, which means it does huge multipliers on towers and opponents and castle gates and buildings so blunt damage is always very very effective against buildings and towers so you have to kind of understand that even though it looks like a low damage output this is the strongest unit in the game it will do the most damage besides the hero the hero with all his spells and powers so you want to upgrade your cannons but just because it is the strongest you know unit in the game uh, it also has a lot of weaknesses, and you have to learn how to utilize the cannon effectively 
this cannon has low life. It has 720. It also has a extremely high cost right here. It costs five points. And it only shoots, again, one shot every five or six seconds. So it's extremely vulnerable. And it doesn't target units. It only has a specific AI to target towers. And then it will also target the mortar, which is over here, which is a defensive, like, tank like unit that shoots out poison so the cannon will not attack a swarm of knights or paladins that are attacking it so you kind of got to get used to what these things all do then you get the pyromancer the pyromancer is great counter for swarms of knights so on defense if you're uh worried about knights you put some pyromancers in there it's a fire mage it throws out a fireball that does an aoe effect and hits everyone in its path a great defensive unit early on and you want to have those in your waves. You only need one of those in each of your waves. It becomes a very strong offensive unit as well, probably around the 15 to 2,000 trophy range when you start seeing a ton of pyromancers. Next, we have a mummy here, which is a monster that you can unlock down in the dungeon. And the mummy is actually really, really effective and really powerful. This is probably the strongest offensive monster currently in the game. It does cost a lot of points to summon, but he instantly summons right next to your hero. So he also does poison damage, which a lot of units are weak to, and he has an AI that does not target towers. So again, you want to get familiar with the units and use them to your strength. The mummy is acting like a, uh, like a tank in higher level gameplay, and it also protects the hero. It's like a human walking shield. And the best part is that it spawns instantly right next to your hero, whereas all your other troops spawn way back at the start of the, of the map, and you have to wait you know, 30 seconds or 40 seconds for them to catch up to you in their fight. So the mummy has a great, great advantage there. Then you unlock a R Blaster, which is a more advanced archer. It has longer range. It also has a little bit more HP than the archer. They are more expensive to bring out. Uh, personally, I've always been a fan of the archers over the R blasters, but they are both very, very effective. The R blasters are the best unit for like if you have a complete maxed out base. But this is the beginning of the game, so you're not really going to have that. And the R the R blasters cost four points, and that's very, very expensive in the beginning of the game. So you're probably not going to be using R blasters much. Then you get to the werewolf, who is just too damn expensive. He costs like. 12 or 13 points and he he is very very powerful now he just got a lot of increase in buffs and damage output and hp you can see he has 5500 hp but he's just so damn expensive and we haven't really tested him in the lower levels here you're not going to really have him unlocked um, for some time either because you have to unlock all the story missions down here in the dungeon so we won't even talk about the mortar because, again, that is a, a more of an advanced level troop, and you're not going to get access to that for some time. So down here in the dungeon, this is where you, you can get a lot of free gems and also some free hero gear. So you can see over here for doing this mission, we will actually get 12 gems. We can't do it because you have to build and you have to beat the previous mission. So if, if we want to, we can go ahead and beat this mission right here. We can get 30,000 in gold. Every time you fight, it does cost bread as well. So be careful of that. Always collect your farms and always level up your farms. So the basic attacking strategy and why I say that cannons are so good is you'll notice here that cannon shot takes that guy down. And you can notice here that the cannon took that down in one shot he one shotted that tower right there you can see the cannon it's pretty much going to two shot the the barricade right there when you're using the spell the firestorm like i told you you want to move and touch as many buildings as possible with that firestorm and you the cannons, again, do so much damage that you don't need more than one or two to take down things. And if you have more than one or two, they're all just wasted because they all will just shoot the same target. And that target will already be dead with one cannon shot. So if three cannons all sit there and try and load up and shoot a tower, you know, you're wasting 10 morale points. 
that you could have been using on something else because that one cannonball kills it and the other two just don't do anything and they're just stuck right there so again think strategically do not waste your morale points in the higher missions here in the dungeons and fighting other players you need to think strategically you need to use all your morale points effectively the night spam is just constantly spamming out knights and having one or two cannons in the background to help clean up all of you know the buildings and such so use your workers to dig these tunnels and you can see it takes three minutes to unlock the next mission and when we get to this mission we're gonna win 10 gems for getting 100% completion on it so you can earn a lot of gems down here in the dungeons and this is can help you actually get your third spell slot this right here will actually unlock the ogre and as you keep progressing you'll slowly unlock more monsters and you'll get more gems and more gold so this one right here unlocks the gargoyle level one you can also get hero items so this is a special blue hero item in there it is a random chance you don't know what you're going to get so over here you get 65,000 so there are tons of great rewards and you again want to save your gems so you can get the third spell slot that is the most important thing that you want is the third spell slot as you keep going down you get better bigger things but the missions become harder so right here we have 25 gems just for beating that mission right there we have ogre level two this is also how you level up your monsters right here we have 50 gems so you can see you can start getting a massive amount of gems here's the mummy so we will now take a look in the next video on waves and defensive tactics and also base layouts thanks for watching if you have any questions please leave them down below and uh, please like share subscribe to the channel and again thanks for watching guys